Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Happy December 21st. Is that right? 10 days left in the year? What? What's happening here? December 21st, 10 days left in the year. Oh my goodness. What has happened this year? It's craziness, isn't it? So I'm being a little bit quiet because we've got lots of people in the house today and no one else gets up at 5 a.m. <laughs> so I'm like whew, trying to be a little bit quiet. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Angel. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, good morning, Heather. So great to see everybody. Are you all up like you're trying to get like stuff done, like you're busy, your family's home, whatever, trying to get stuff done. Like that's, that's what I am. Like I'm the only, here's what I've learned a long time ago. I've learned this a long time ago. Take this as, this is JV wisdom, okay? Very few people will get up at 4 or 5 a.m., right? They just won't. So if you want time to yourself, get up at 4 or 5 a.m., I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying that you love it. I'm saying if you want time to yourself, there are certain moments of the day where nobody else wants to get up. But if you do, you get those moments. You get to claim those moments. You get to claim that time. And you know, people always ask me, it's so funny, the questions that people get me will ask me, they'll say like, like do you like getting up at 5 a.m.? I'm like, mm, you're asking the wrong question. You're asking the wrong question. What you need to be asking is, do you like creating your life on purpose? Do you like hitting goals? Do you like going after dreams? Do you like feeling the feelings that you want in the morning? In the morning, the feelings that I want are calm, confident, grounded, productive. Those are the feelings that I want in the morning. Calm, confident, grounded, productive. And I want you to ask me that question. Don't ask me if I like getting up at 5 a.m. Ask me if I like feeling calm, confident, confident, um, calm, confident, grounded, and productive. Because the answer to that question is yes. So if that means I have to get up at 5 a.m. I used to get up at 4 a.m. during the pandemic when the girls were all home. Um, I would get up at 4 a.m. Because if I could get up at 4 a.m., then I knew that I had... I had some time in the morning where nobody else was getting up and it was quiet and I could journal and I could write and I could read and I could think and I could do work and and it's 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 not a sacrifice it's a swap right I, I'm just I'm hell bent on creating my life on purpose of purpose and I'm hell bent on taking action on it and if that means I've got to get up at four or five to make sure that I get that done, then that's what I'm going to do. So here we are early in the morning, 6.30 a.m. Energized Live, making magic in the mornings, making our energized, doing our thing. I've actually even already done my compass planner and gotten that done. And, you know, I will tell you the piece that, that I always do first in my compass planner is I'll show it to you blank the piece I always always do first because it's it's what my brain goes to first because my goals are always top of mind top of mind what I tend to do first <laughs> are these my focused five I tend to try to get because I have so my brain is like morning is my green zone and there's so much going on and this helps me calm that monkey brain I tend to do the focused five or at least get a couple things out of my mind first. Then I go back and do my dream big goals and my work hard goals and my gratitude. And I'm very excited to share with you. I didn't actually plan. I just happened to have this sitting here. I wasn't going to talk about this this morning. I want to do, I wanted to do an ask me anything Q and a type of situation. What, um, what you're going to love is the layout of this is slightly different in the new one. Just wait. Like, I cannot even tell you how excited I am for the new. It's got a new cover. It's got a, it's a whole new look to it. And then the inside, of course, we still have, because this is the methodology. So this clearly isn't going to change. But there's some pieces in here that change. There's some pieces down here that change. And I'm, I'm really excited about it. So that's coming in January. It will not be ready for January 1st. And quite frankly... That's simply because it I, it's a one-man show over here. I'm not Amazon, and I'm not um, 
Erin Condren, <laughs> the ginormous planner company. And, <clears throat> and lots of the stuff is backed up right now. So it just, it takes a little bit longer, but we'll get it in January. And you know what? You're going to be just fine when you get it. We're going to be just fine when we get it. If we don't start it on January 1st, you're going to be fine. Because you know what? You start a lot of things on January 1st that you do not finish. So I said it. I said what I said. So you're going to get this new planner in January, and it's going to be awesome. And the new layout of it is so gorge. And as soon as I get a prototype of it, which is coming very soon, I can't wait to show that to you. So that's very exciting. Okay, so I, I thought maybe we would do, I thought maybe we'd keep this a little bit shorter today. Ha, ha, ha. You know how that goes. Ha, ha, ha. Ho, ho, ho. And do some Q's and A's. It's been a while since we've just had kind of the open forum of Q's and A's and kind of an ask me anything. Um, but I thought that I would have that available to you. So I thought maybe we could do a little, little Q and A, a little ask me anything. How are you feeling going into the holidays? How are you thriving? We've been talking about this since before Thanksgiving. We've really been talking about it since November 1st thriving during the holidays and being in control, navigating the holidays with calm and confidence and grace and being prepared, all the things. How are the holidays feeling for you? Are you implementing some of the tools that we talked about? And just sort of what else is on your mind? You can use the question box if you want to at the bottom. You can type it in the comments. It's sometimes, <laughs> maybe it's just wandering, wandering around. Lady, what's the problem? You know what, when you come out of the bedroom to eat, you can't get back in, the door shuts, and sorry, gotcha. If you, if you walk out of the bedroom, you lose your spot. You get stressed around all the food, but tips of help, love, that's really good, Heather. I'm glad that, um, I'm glad you acknowledge you get stressed around the food and that you're using some of the tips. I also would suggest to you that you, you could be, like I was, telling yourself the story that you're stressed around the food. Sometimes that story that we tell ourselves, um, we take as truth when it's not. It's not. So let's not create more stress. Let's not create more angst. Let's not tell ourselves a story that we're stressed around food. In fact, let's change that story to that you're calm and you're competent and you're in charge. And you're not stressed around food because it's just food, right? There's, there's probably nothing that you can't get the next day. So there's no reason to be stressed around the food. Let's tell ourselves a little, a slightly different story. Slightly different story. Jody, you're feeling prepared for the holidays and doing yoga to stay focused. Um, Francesca, I have done lots of things on Sure Thing. I've done actually a, a live with Megan that's also a podcast. So th that will probably answer your questions about Sure Thing. And also, um, that is a Googleable question. If you type in the program Sure Thing, or you follow Megan on social media, you could probably get the answer to that question. You're feeling very prepared, Emily. That's amazing. I love that. Chris, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Um, oh, I do see a question. Um, my ice is stuck in my cup. Also, if this isn't the cutest cup in the world, I don't know what is. I don't even know what is. Um, Stephanie says, I have this must slay 2023 um, mindset and it's stressing me out and you don't want to fail well here's the thing can we oh my gosh y'all listen we've talked about this a gazillion million times nobody defines failure except you no one no one gets to define that except you i've just given up hold please i don't understand why we get all in our heads about failure I'm not saying I don't. I'm just saying I don't understand why we get all in our heads about failure. And I don't want to fail. Well, then don't. Just change your definition of what failure is. Like who, whose definition are you using? And if it's someone else's and it makes you feel less than, then stop using it. You are a grown-ass adult. Knock it off. I get very tired of women, myself included, telling ourselves these disempowering stories about failure and stress and anxiety and all the things, which 
yes, we've been through a hard two years. And yes, those situations and those predicaments are real. But at the same time, just tell, your, tell yourself a different story. Stop angsting yourself into not doing anything. Stop making everything so much bigger than it is. I said what I said. I said what I said this morning. Stop, stop making everything into so much bigger than it is. And if you want a vision board, get a vision board and use it. If you want to actually move the needle on your goals, I suggest the compass planner because every day you have to write your goals down and you have to write your focused five that are actually going to move you towards those goals. You want to really move the needle on your goals, you get yourself a community that's going to keep you on track with that, right? You surround yourself with people and you stop letting yourself off the freaking hook. Stop letting yourself off the hook. Women spend so much time preparing to prepare to do the thing. You, true or false, you could spend an hour in the freaking notebook aisle of Target trying to find the perfect journal and the perfect, the perfect notebook and the perfect pen so you can come home so you can write the perfect to-do list to get prepared to prepare to do that. Stop it. Just get a freaking compass planner and a pad of paper and get to work. Just get to work. If you want a vision board, like my daughter makes um, a vision board. Jessie makes a vision board, but then she makes it a screensaver on her phone. I think that's awesome. I have um, a goal that we have as a team as my watch face because every time I look at my watch, I see it. I have, I use my phone screensaver as reminders for things, you know, that I want top of mind. And then you got to freaking get to work. Just get to work. Get to work. Emily says, I have a question about the planner. Are the focus five supposed to be a to-do list for the day or the five habits you are doing the same thing every day? The focus, thank you, Lorraine. I love that Lorraine answered that. The focused five are actions you are taking that day to move closer to your goals. So for example, something I've already written down today that is in alignment with my goals is working on a 21 day coach email series for my new coaches. That is very specific. It's very cross offable. Will I get all of that done today? Maybe, maybe not. Could I write that again tomorrow? I could if I don't get it done, totally fine. It's in direct alignment with one of my dream big goals. So your focus five should be in direct alignment with your goals that will help move you forward in some way. What your focus five are not are laundry or make lunches. That's just part of being a grown up. You're, you're a grown up human on this planet, okay? You gotta do laundry and take a shower and go to the grocery. That's not on your focus five. Your focus five are very specific to your dream big goals, your work hard goals. They're moving the needle on getting you closer to the life that you wanna create, okay? I'm going to take a moment and take a drink of my Energize. Um, any other like just general questions? I just really wanted to, I didn't have a specific topic or anything today. I wanted to open it up for anything that you might want to talk about. So questions on anything, again, you can use the question box or you can type them right here in the comments, but I need a drink of this Energize. Oh my stars, that's good. Wow, it really is like the day can start now. Cue the Lion King music. Oh, it's so good. I literally, I don't understand who's not drinking this. Like, are you, are you not drinking? For, tell me this. What is your favorite flavor? Because we have a little war in my house. Because clearly this is the best strawberry lemonade. It's the best. My daughter, who is wrong, <laughs> thinks that fruit punch is the best. See, so I made her little container. You can see it's got the fruit punch sticker on the bottom. So we know. Um, but it's a war in my family. It's a war in my family. Because clearly strawberry lemonade is the best. Um, the vitamin C pack is this. This is what I'm, this is what I've been using for, oh my gosh, I bet three years, two, two or three years. I always use raspberry. I always use this Im immune plus. Always, always, always. 
And if, if we've been friends on here for a while, you know that I, I used to do fruit punch and lemon mixed together. It had to be mixed together. And now we just have it already mixed together. So I don't have to even do that anymore, which is so good. Strawberry lemonade is the best. It is literally the best. Rhonda, I think you accidentally hit that you wanna come on live with me. I'm assuming that was an accident. <laughs> I'm assuming that was an accident. Um, Patty, on Christmas morning, will I wake the family because you were excited to let them sleep? Patty, my children are grown ups. <laughs> do, you, do you know how old my children are? I, we have two of the three girls. Clearly the youngest one is working on the ship. We shall see her on Monday, the 26th. Um, my children are grown up human beings. They are not five years old. They can get up whenever they want to get up and we will go about our business whenever um, people get up. <laughs> we are not five years old here in this house. So no, there's no waking of people up. There's getting up and whatever we choose to do that day. You're very, you're funny. You have, a, a, I think a 10 year old. We don't have 10 year olds in our house anymore. We sleep in. Okay, hold please. Okay, got that. Melanie says, best advice when you have a cold. Um, when I am not feeling 100%, also it is really interesting to me. Do any of you have friends who are like sick all the time? You're, they're like, you're like, they're, every time you talk to them, it's like their kids are sick or they're sick. I have a friend that sick all the time. Like, wow. Interesting. Here, here's what I really believe in terms of, of immunity. And I only believe this from my own experience. Some of it's fact, some of it's science fact, some of it's JV fact. Number one, this and the properties that are in this every single day, I think um, that's number one, literally. I think it's number one. Um, number two, extreme hydration. <laughs> like really, really, really hydrate. Number three, I drink my superfood shake every day. I've been drinking it every single day since March of 2009. So every single day I've got ashwagandha and spirulina and matcha and all these amazing things in my body. I also put power greens in my shake every day. So I get extra greens in my shake every day. And I also drink some extra greens. So I really up my greens. And I, th I think small daily habits add up to building your immunity. I wash my hands like a beast and um, I do a lot of laundry. So I, I think that there's a, uh, some habits that keep you, keep your immunity at a higher level. And then sometimes you're just gonna get a cold. And it just is what it is. And it isn't, it's not a statement on, on your moral character. Sometimes you just get a cold. And so you just got to level up some of the other stuff that you're doing. I take zinc and vitamin D when I'm feeling a little bit run down. And um, I keep doing the things that I'm doing, you know. And I think it's just um, a matter of lots of lots of habits. Yeah, I, I do tend to agree with you, Christina. People use that word sick for me they just have a cold no you just have a cold you're not sick you have, you have a cold or maybe you have um some allergies or something like that are you throwing up then you're not sick <laughs> and that's my definition that's my definition my definition um mary i don't do that <laughs> Uh, I have two, she says, I have two adult children, a 16 year old, and I wake them up every year. Yeah, I don't do that. My, my children are grown ups and they'll get up when they get up. They work full time jobs and, um, they're, I'm so, so grateful and so blessed that they're here. They're here this week. They're, we go on the cruise and then Josie's here for another week and I'm just happy they're here. I'm happy that they're here and no, I'm not going to wake them up <laughs> ever. Um, oh, Kira, you just had COVID and your energy was affected. Yes. Um, Josie and I both actually had COVID in May after um, not having it for two years. And of course, I went back to Indiana for graduation and 
I should have known. I went back to Indiana and I brought COVID back with me. Um, and we were, I mean, it took us, it took me like 10 days plus to finally get a negative test. Um, and my energy was a little down, but I would, but I still moved my body every day. I took a nap in the afternoon, but I moved my body every day, drank a lot, stayed on top of all my habits, um, did all the things and just, um, stayed inside and rested. And sometimes your body's just like, oh, I just need, just need a moment. Sometimes your body's really like, I just need a moment. I just need a moment. I don't know. Yeah. I just need a moment. <laughs> I figured it was probably a, a mistake, Renee. Okay, so we're going into the holidays. Tomorrow I'll be live on my team page. I'm actually going live on my team page um, in just a minute because we've got some really cool, y'all, the stuff that we are doing in 2023 is so mind-blowing that I, I, it's, I can't hardly, I can't take it all in. So I'm going live on my team page. Friday, I'm not quite sure if I'm going to go live here or for my subscribers or at all because Friday we are going over to this ship so that Jenna can see can get like a tour of the ship before we get on on Monday we're going over to the ship on Friday because we won't be with Jesse on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day so we're gonna take some gifts over to her on the 23rd we're gonna take her out to eat we're gonna you know go on the, Jenna's gonna get a tour of the ship we're just gonna hang out with Jesse for a few hours on Friday since we won't be with her on the 24th or 25th and then on Monday the 26th I get on the ship we all get on the ship and I will not be live just just so you know there will be no energized live uh, until we get off the ship and I'm not buying a big Wi-Fi package I am not um, I will buy some Wi-Fi and I will try to stay on top of my emails a little bit, but I'm not going to be on because parents of older children, you might understand this. It is really hard and really rare to get all your children in one spot at the same time when they get older. It's really hard. I have one that lives on the West Coast in Los Angeles. I have one that lives on the East Coast in DC. I have one that's out in the Caribbean now. And if you can get all your children in one place at one time, it's very rare. And uh, I'm not going to be sitting on my email, right? So I, I, I love all of you very dearly, but I, I'm going to talk to my family <laughs> for next week. Um, we have a big goal for the end of 2022. I'll, how's it going for you? Emily, I'll keep you posted on that. I'll keep you posted and um, I will, I'll let you know when we get to the end. Um, family traditions plans on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We watch the Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom Parade on Christmas Day. We always have. So I think, um, you know, those traditions, the tradition for us is that we're together. And that what that day has looked like has definitely changed. We used to go up to my in-laws. We don't do that anymore. Um, we're just, we're very chill. Sometimes we go see a movie. Uh, we don't have like certain, the tradition is that we're together. We sleep in. We we're thankful to be here where it's warmer and not where it's gray and cold in Indiana. Hopefully we'll be able to be outside. We heated the pool in case the girls wanted to get in. We watch the parade. We have some food. We just hang out. On this Christmas day, we'll be packing because on Monday morning, the 26th, we're heading to the ship and getting on. So I'm so excited for us all just to, just to be together. Just to be together. SL Joan 2. <laughs> Coming in at 6.55 with a deep life question, you're going to have to come back and ask that again. Is the life you're living and decisions you're making always with your husband? And is it a joint life or is he supporting you in your dreams 100%? Why is that an or? I'm going to ask a question back to you. That might be, we can talk about spouse support another time because that's too much for 6.55. We're going to wrap up here. But my question back to you is, why is that an or? Why is it not an and? You think on that and come back to me. Um, Patty, where's the cruise go to? It is um, a Nassau. We're not going to get off on Nassau, but Nassau, Day at Sea, and then Castaway Key, Disney's private island. 
So uh, we'll be on. We get on on Monday. We'll be there all on the ship on Monday. Stops at Nassau on Tuesday, but we're not getting off. Um, we're, we're going to try to see Jessie and then day at sea. She'll be very busy on that day at sea. We may not get to see her that much. And then Castaway Key, hopefully we get to see her a little bit more on Castaway Key. And then we get off on Friday morning and probably she'll probably come off the ship with us for a little bit, maybe take her to breakfast or something like that and spend a little bit more time with her on Friday morning and then we'll come back. So kind of works around her schedule. Brianna, we're not celebrating yours on the ship this time, but we have, and it's awesome. It's fantastic. It's fantastic. Like literally it's, it's, if you can get on the Disney ship for New Year's Eve, it's amazing. What is my, what does my daughter do on the ship? Brit, she is, um, she's a performer on the Disney wish. She's a performer. So, but if you can get on the Disney ship, um, for New Year's Eve, it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, we won't be stir crazy. <laughs> we're going to go to the spa and we're going to be with our daughter. So uh, I have zero desire to get off in Nassau. I have been there. I have done that. I don't need to do that anymore. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping that, um, you know, maybe if she does a cruise contract again, that maybe it's somewhere like, um, I don't know, Australia or something. <laughs> she gets on one of the ships that takes like one of the Mediterranean excursions. I'm like, well, we just have to go and we have to go multiple times. So we'll see. Okay, so th tomorrow I'm in my team page. Friday, I'm not sure where I'll be. And then we've got Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So I don't know, maybe we'll do a quick Energize Live on Christmas Eve. Um, oh, we're going to the Magic Kingdom on Christmas Eve. So I don't know, we'll see. Well, stay tuned, but I'll just, I'll just be on my stories and we'll stay connected there. And then maybe, 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 depending on what time we leave on Monday, maybe we'll do a quick energized live Monday, the 26th before we head to the ship. We'll see. We'll see what, how that goes. Okay. You're awesome. I just, I'm so grateful for you. Uh, this is like episode, mm, I'm going to have to look and see I don't want to misspeak, but I want to say maybe episode 270. I don't know if that's correct. Something like that. And my goal is to get us to 365 episodes so that if someone wanted to watch Energize Live for a full year, we could. So y'all, we got a long way to go. And I'm so grateful for all of you. Like literally who would ever thought that when I opened up this social media platform and said, I'm going to make some energize. Does anyone want to make it with me? Uh, that there would be people who did and who would, and we've had, my gosh, you've, you've been with me. You've been with me as I've made the decision. We made the decision to move. You've been with me when we packed. You've been with me when we moved. You were with me on the journey to move. You were with me when this house had no furniture in it. You're with me now as we have a dirt yard. <laughs> Hopefully we'll, we'll have some flowers today. You've been with me this whole journey. And we still, we come together early mornings and we have conversations and you're with me when we watch the sunrise in the summer. And it's just, I just love this community that we're creating together. And these kinds of communities become a movement that remind women, I hope, of your power and your potential. Um, my, my biggest goal, I think, out of everything is to help us all as women stop playing small. Just stop playing small and to get out of your own way and to, to go after the life that you want to create on purpose with purpose because, because you can. And this is an address rehearsal, so let's get to it. All right, go have an awesome, awesome day, and we will talk again soon. So grateful for all of you.